In today's video, I survive 100 days in a cottagecore Minecraft world. This world is lightly modded with cottagecore animals, plants, and decor. Of course, there's plenty of dangers along the way, including new animals trying to kill me. But let's find out if we can beat the game and build the cottagecore base of our dreams. On day one, we spawned into this forest with a stony shore and an ocean next to it. Wait, oh my gosh, is that a deer? Okay, wait, wait, wait. First of all, we have to punch a tree, make a crafting table, and a couple of wooden tools. And now we can go check out the deer. Oh no, I think it's scared of me. I guess we'll leave it be. Goodbye, friend. Next, we're gonna gather some stone and coal, which luckily is all around us here. Then we'll make some stone tools and get some more coal. Oh, these flowers are pretty. It looks like they're lilacs. We have Mizuno's texture pack on, so some stuff looks a little bit different. I'm not super familiar with it, but we'll figure it out as we go. Next I saw a village, so we're going to head over there and hopefully we'll grab some loot. On the way, I saw some lapis in the water, so I got a couple of pieces. I'm sure that'll come in handy, and this house is a bit cursed. And this one is full of some kind of soil. Hmm, okay. <gasps> Bookshelves! And I'll take the lectin as well. Okay, I need food, so we're going to grab these to make bread. Also, all the villagers are different animals. I love this so much. Is this a turkey? I think it's a turkey. Then, as I continued to explore the village, this hog attacked me and I was one hit from death. So I ran into a villager house to escape and make food to recover. That was not very cottage core. Also, I killed the turkey. I hate it here. But with that drama over, it's time to sleep our first night in this world. Except the drama's not actually over, because on day two there were more aggressive animals. First there was another hog, which I was more prepared for this time. Then I grabbed some more village loot, including onions in this chest. Oh, that's so fun. We'll have to plant these. Then I went over to the spruce forest to gather some wood and some spruce saplings. Which was all going well, until a giant wolf attacked me. I tried to panic build for a second like a Fortnite kid, but I'm not a Fortnite kid, so I gave up fast and ran. I really need some armor against these animals, so I think we'll climb some mountains and find iron. On day three, I found what I think is iron in the side of this hill, but there's a skeleton around, so we're going to be a chicken and go at it from the back. It's four iron we've got, plus some more coal. Next, I spotted another village and headed over. Oh, please let those just be cows. Okay, we're good. They're just cows. By the village, I saw this enderman, and we want pills to get to the end eventually. So we might as well start now. Ah, no pearl. But I got the monster hunter achievement. Then at the village we discovered whatever this is. Maybe a badger, I think? And I found more bookshelves that'll be good for enchanting and more food. Then I spotted some sunflower plains in the distance. Which is very cottage course, so we headed over. Tiny flower forest? Ooh, I think we're gonna settle here to build. I wanna make a big house, but it's gonna take a while to gather supplies. So for now, we're just going to set up our stuff right here. We'll place some dirt in the water to grow giant spruce trees, and for now we'll get started with the two saplings we have. These mountains behind us might be another good source of iron, so I'm going to go check those out. And I was right. Everything went smoothly, except there was powdered snow. Oh, and I forgot my bed, so we're rushing back in the dark. The next day, I chopped my first spruce tree, smelted my iron, and went over to the nearest village, the one we'd already been to, to shut some villagers in their houses, just in case I want to use them later. On days six to nine, I decided to go mining for diamonds. I want to build a cottage car house and defeat the dragon, but my first task is enchanted diamond tools and armor. First I found more iron, then I dug into a mine shaft. It wasn't really what I was after, but I had a quick look around and grabbed some string. Then when I was still digging down, I was only on negative 16, I found diamonds already. First diamonds! Down further, I also found some gold, so that'll be good for the nether. And eventually, I came across an amethyst geode. Oh, I love these things. I'm not planning to build with the blocks here, but we'll take a couple anyway. My inventory was getting pretty full at this point, but I still wanted to find more diamonds. First I got this vein of three, and then I found what looked like two separate veins right next to each other with just a one block gap. I decided to leave them so that we could come back with fortune and get more. When I resurfaced it was night, but I didn't want to sleep since we're going to want phantom membranes. They'll be good for potions, so we might as well get that sorted. I killed mobs till sunrise and then made a final piece of iron armour. 
have this pretty texture pack. It makes it like cottage core flowers. We're so cute. Okay, but I want to check how close we are to starting an enchanting setup. We have the diamonds and the book for the table, but we need obsidian. So I made a pickaxe and I went off to a nearby lava pool to mine obsidian. This is very boring, but I guess while we're here, we should get all the obsidian we'll need for a while. I returned home in time for sunset. It's so beautiful here. Of course though, we'll be staying up again for phantoms. So we'll make our enchanting setup and chop some trees while we wait. There was this cursed chicken zombie and also as the sun rose, I managed to get our first ender pearl, but no phantoms. On days 11 to 12, I went fishing and caught nothing interesting, but I did learn the river has nasty eels in it. Ah, what's happening? No. Oh, let's try this again. Peaceful cottage core fishing. This has not been very cottage core. The chaos continued though when an eel latched onto my new goose friend in my boat and he ate the eel. What it's kind of savage. I also made a cow pen and with a couple of sheep. On night 12 I got my first phantom but no drops. And on day 13 I enchanted my first item, my diamond pickaxe. Efficiency and unbreaking. Nice. I spent the next days trying to get more levels for more enchantments. And after about five sleepless nights, I finally got some phantom membranes. Days 15 to 18 was spent going on an adventure to gather more resources. We need more coal which I found in this dripstone cave, and then I found these random carrots just in the wild. And while we were exploring the spruce forest, I found a pillager outpost. The loot usually isn't great in these, but we don't have much yet, so I guess anything would be nice. I'm just going to beeline for the chest and ignore the pillagers. And it was totally worth it because they have these adorable crates of onions. Also, enchanting bottle. Okay, we're out. Oh, look at all the different birds as we sail down the river. Such a vibe. I also found a butterfly and they don't seem to do much, but they're really pretty. I love them. Next, I found a village and they had tomato seeds. I'm so excited to plant these. There were also so many cats, but I have no fish on me. Maybe we'll try to get a cat closer to home. Speaking of home, our inventory is very full, so I think we should head back. On day 20, I'd returned, and I forgot to film our first wandering trader. But now they're gone, and I have two angry llamas. No murder happened. Nope. None at all. I spent the day chopping wood and working on the enchanting setup. And then on day 21, I noticed the enchanting table would give me fortune. But I need to level up for it. We need to reach level 28, so I'm going to breed animals first, and then mine for XP. By day 23 I'd found more diamonds but this method is really slow for getting XP. Getting these chickens might help with XP? Oh, I think the geese like seeds too. I harvested my first tomato which is definitely my new favourite crop. And then I looked through some modded recipes. I think I can make shepherd's pie. We just need to cook some meat and get some milk off our cows. And done. <gasps> Cute! It says I need a bowl to eat some. Let's try this again. Oh, I got it! Oh, this is so cute! On day 24, I gave up my scuff methods to get XP when I realised I probably have enough supplies for a simple mob farm. We'll probably need one at some point anyway, so we might as well prepare materials and do it now. Once I had everything ready, I climbed a hill and pillowed up, placing ladders as I went. And on day 26, I started making a little platform and collection area. We only have enough iron for two out of four hoppers, but that'll do for now. Then I built the tube for the mobs to fall down and the area for them to spawn on. If we put water here, then they'll flow down that and trapdoors along the sides. Also, spiders don't get on the tubes very well, so I'm going to put trapdoors that'll stop them spawning. I finished the farm on day 28, but I hadn't considered how to actually get down from here. Um, maybe if we just bridge over here. Now there's water below us and we can just jump. Whee! Okay, the farm works really well for just a starter mob farm. I'm really happy with it. We'll stay here and kill mobs for a day or two. By day 32, I'd headed home with more than enough levels and I enchanted my spare pickaxe with fortune 3 before returning to the mines to collect all the diamonds we've found. This is going to be a good haul. 
And sure enough, on day 33, I was able to get full diamond armor and tools. And even get enchantments on most of it. I want protection on most armor and a gold fire pro item for the nether. We also have a sharpness sword. The enchanting gods were somewhat with us today. Now that we're geared up, I think it's time to start collecting supplies for our house. I want a lot of crimson wood, so into the nether we go. Please be a good spawn. Ah, uh, bricks? I think we're in a fortress. Honestly, I just wanted a crimson forest, but this will be good. Fortress isn't what we're doing right now, but I will check these chests. While trying to find a way out, I got my first blaze rod. And eventually found an exit into the nether waste. No sign of a crimson forest yet though. Oh! Return to sender! That was an accident, but I'll take it. After traversing the Salsam Valley, on day 35 I reached a crimson forest. Of course, it's gotta be guarded by hoglins. Oh, is that a warp mushroom? If I can get that, they'll leave me alone. So I collected five stacks of crimson wood before heading home on day 36. After that adventure, we'll have a bowl of shepherd's pie and a good night's sleep. The next supply we need for the house will be birch wood. So the next morning, we're off to find a good birch forest. I think there might be something beyond our mob farm. I found it and spent the next days gathering a few stacks of birch logs. And on days 39 to 40, I continued gathering other bits and bobs for our house, mostly stone, and I cleared some of the area for building. Then I started to plan the base shape with stone, but there's one last supply I'd really like, and that's azalea leaves. There's no lush caves around here, just a lot of dripstone, so we're going to try our luck exploring the spruce biomes. I feel like there's usually azalea trees there. Do you see that? I think we found it! If I can just get a couple of saplings from the tree, we won't need to dig down to caves. And we got three, along with lots of flowering leaves. On the way home, I saw blue crabs, and I think they're so cute, but unfortunately, they do seem scared of me. By day 43, I was home, and on day 44, I was ready to build my house. First, I made the base using stone, cobble, and andesite which looked like this with stone stairs up to the entrance. Then above that I added walls using birch planks and details in spruce and some azalea leaves. And these beautiful detailed windows. Then we'll add some little details like lanterns before moving on to work on the roof, which is going to have a lot more colour. And by colour I mean pink, which is the crimson wood we gathered earlier mixed in with some pink concrete. Also, it turns out that two slabs make a different block than just regular planks, so that'll be good for variety. And this is how it turned out. It's a little bit Tudor inspired and a little bit fantasy. On day 63, I started to clean up the interior. It has kind of three levels, with the entrance, the main part up here, and the bottom which will be good for storage. On days 64 to 66, I added a spruce floor on the bottom level, using the Mizuno slabs texture as well as normal planks. I moved all my stuff in and did some basic decorating. So now all our stuff is inside with the bed and enchanting set up at the top and our storage downstairs. On day 67, I tamed this cat at a nearby village, and I saw another one, but it didn't want my last two fish. I dyed my new kitty's colour magenta and took her home. Then I just messed around with paintings for a bit. On day 68, I wanted to see if I could get looting. Watch me go outside to find my enchanting setup and then realise I just moved it into the house. The brain is not working today. I didn't get looting, but we're just going to skip that and go back to the nether so we can start prepping for the dragon. We need to get blaze rods from the fortress and then ender pearls, hopefully also from the nether. Found ourselves a blaze spawner! Our armor's pretty good, so I guess we'll just get in there. Hello, sir. Okay, I think that'll be enough. We kept searching the fortress until we found some nether wart. 
And then after that, it's off to find some long boys in the warp biome. Huh. That's cool. The biome, as far as I can see, is a bunch of little islands. We'll just make some little safety platforms and go around provoking endermen. I went home on day 71 after getting more than enough pearls. On day 72, I planted my nether wart and made some potions and eyes of ender. But instead of going directly to the stronghold, I spent a couple of days exploring modern furniture and adding to my house's interior. After I made the cute stills, I found a recipe for shelves and I put a couple on the wall with pot plants. Then I tried making lamps and they didn't quite work on the shelf. They did go on the furnace and on the walls. It's still not a complete interior, but it is beginning to look a little less bare. I also took a look at the cute foods again and I wanted to make a stuffed pumpkin to decorate with. It requires cooking on a stove in a pot, so I need more iron to make those. Luckily, there's a lot in the mountains that I hadn't collected yet. I was back by day 77 and I made the cooking setup but it still wouldn't let me make the pumpkin thingy. I swear I have everything for it, but it did let me make some stew and apple cider. Well, at least the cooking setup looks cute. On day 78, I tried my stew and it gave me a comfort effect. I'm not sure what that does. Then we headed over to the mob farm to collect some arrows for the dragon fight. After a little bit of mob slaughtering, I came back home and to go with the arrows, I want a decent bow. Our current bow only has unbreaking on it, so we'll enchant a second one with power. And then we'll combine them with an anvil. Good thing I just collected all that iron. Perfect. I now had everything ready to go fight the dragon, so on day 81, I threw my first eye of Ender. Let it go. Ooh, kind of the direction of the mob farm. Goodbye house. I throw another one from just beyond the hills and it's still going the same way. Into the birch forest and it's pointing towards a mountain now. Oh, there's powdered snow too. Eventually we had to make a boat because the ice had taken us to the ocean. And then they started going down. So it appears the stronghold's actually in the ocean. I hate that for us. Because I have no idea how Minecraft water works, this was a very awkward process. I ended up making a hole and draining the water so I wouldn't drown. We really would have benefited from respiration. I was digging down on days 83 and 84, and when I reached deep slate level, I started to question my navigation skills. Can it be this far down? Maybe I'll dig around horizontally a bit. Okay, no luck there. Maybe it is further down. Then after a while, I heard a silverfish. I think that means we're actually by the portal room. And sure enough. Oh my gosh. Okay. We were right in the portal room, so after organizing my inventory, I added eyes and jumped right in. Let's go! We're in this half underground hole. I think the safe strat is to dig up rather than go around. Place water in case I encounter Enderman, take a potion, and start shooting the crystals. The dragon was really out to get me with its breath. Just leave me alone so I can destroy your magic health crystals and then kill you. Please. The crystals are pretty quick to get, except one really tall one that I couldn't see. But we did get it eventually. And then from there actually taking down the dragon was a breeze. I think she should be done in one last hit. And there we go! The end is free! You're welcome, Enderman, or whatever the lore is. We were still just on day 85, so plenty of time to go find Elytra. Through to the end islands, and I grabbed some chorus fruit and started looking around. No sign of a city here. And here's some scary bridging. And more scary bridging. And even more, but with an invisible block glitch. I'm terrified. There was a lot of zooming in on random tiny islands that I thought might be ships. Until eventually, I actually saw a ship. I think my strat is going to be tearing straight up there and killing any shulkers from a distance. If I do get knocked off, we still have one last slow filling potion or we can rely on chorus fruit. 
Okay, we're in. Let's secure the bag. And by bag, I mean wings. Oh, let's go. Oh my gosh, the pink suits my skin and the armor. We look so cute. I'm not really at the point where I need shulker boxes, but we'll have a quick look around. I killed a couple and obtained some stuff in a chest before heading out. I did come prepared with rockets, but not many, so we're going to go straight home. Oh, I forgot about the egg. Gotta get the egg. On day 88, I arrived home with my wings. Look at everything we've accomplished. We've got our armor, our wings, and our house. But it's not over yet, and the front of the house needs some work. So does our farm, actually, if you can even call it a farm. So I went and collected a little more cobble to make a path outside our house, and then I got to work laying it. Then for a farm to the side of it, I terraformed a little, added water for crops, and placed some random flowers. I figured out that crimson fences make this adorable picket design, so we'll border the crop field with them and with azalea leaves. Then I added tomatoes, wheat, potatoes, carrots, and onion, and we'll light it with lanterns. Then I looked at modded crates to add. There's this type, but there's also my favorite, which we already have some of. But I don't think we have any with tomatoes or potatoes. Oh, oh my gosh, I love the tomato one. That's my favorite. Too cute. The farm is looking good now, but I know there's more modded crops. So I flew to a new village to check if they had any new seeds. Ooh, cauldrons. I'll take them. And this poor cleric's house has a powdered snow trap in the doorway. I wonder if he's still alive. Ah, nothing new. Just more of what we have already. On our final days, I took things slowly. I made a new cow pen because ours is small and not very nice. And we're gonna move it to be in front of our farms. In we go, ladies. We also had enough time to move our chickens and add a few final details to the base. Before I knew it, the sun was setting on day 99 and day 100 was upon us. Thank you for joining me for 100 days of Cottagecore Minecraft. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.